All right, guys, take two on Schluter profiles. Sorry for the technical difficulties again. Microphone battery died, so my fault. Uh, but where we were, we were going to go through this again. I just want to talk about Schluter profiles today. You're familiar with bull nose, which is a traditional method of finishing out and protecting your edges of a tile installation. Looks like this. Generally, it's a cut piece of the same tile with a rounded edge. Uh, the limitations are it's a little bit more costly. Some people don't like the aesthetic of the additional grout line. Sometimes the body doesn't match, as you can see here. And then, again, it might be a little more expensive. So a better option, an option that has grown in popularity immensely the last few years, are these Schluter profiles. So I have with me today Ken Zandecki. He is our rep for Schluter Systems. And what a uh, profile is, and you guys have been perfecting this for, for years. You mentioned you're like the Kleenex of edge profiles now. Right. We're talking about a metal profile that is going to protect any edge that needs protecting on your tile installation literally thousands of shapes, sizes, and color options available so we can customize exactly what you need in an inexpensive, easy to install, very clean profile look. So we'll start with a very traditional uh, profile of this that Ken will show, and then we're gonna explore a lot of different options that you may not be familiar with and educate you on how to specify these to get the right size and the right installation for the best results as well. Thank you, Garrett. Yeah, so I'd like to start off with our, our signature piece, our sheen piece. Uh, Werner Schluter, our founder, invented this back in 1975, and this is what kind of started our company. Um, this is just an edge protection for the tile so it doesn't get chipped if you were to vacuum up next to it with the, with the uh, vacuum or something like that. A lot of science in this. If you can see this edge right here, this isn't a perfect 90 degree. It's actually 87 degrees. Uh, it's got a little bump rail in here. What that does, if something were to strike this, it actually forces that down into the bottom of the tile so you don't have a chip out on the top and a repair. Um, so this, th there's a lot of science behind this little piece. It's not just a 90 degree square edge metal. And as you can see here, we have a lot of different styles and color options. We're gonna get into some of our PVC profiles later over there. Um, we have some edge or corner pieces to go with our profile and coordinate with our colors. Um, like I said, obviously a lot of different. We're not going to go into every profile. I think Garrett tried to count them earlier, but uh, he got he got. I, I couldn't get past about 63. Yeah, so there's a few. Um, we do have some some wall or some floor and some wall profiles, different profiles. Um, and, and, and so tell us about the difference between those. So you mentioned the sheen is for your floor, yeah. the jolly is so for look, the wall, but they look exactly the same. Yeah, if you look at the sheen and the jolly in our catalog, which you can also find online at our website, www.suter.com, um, they're going to look very similar. The profile design is exactly the same. So a lot of salespeople or, or customers will ask, what is the difference between them? Mm -hmm. Again, sheen is for your floor. It's going to be more of your through body colors. You're going to have you know, your stainless steel, your aluminums, your brass. Where we get into the, the uh, jollies, those are going to be for walls. That's going to be all your color-coded options. Not going to wear as well on a high traffic surface area. Mm -hmm. Still okay for the shower application because we see a lot of these trims in the shower application, but just not warranted for a floor application. So Gotcha. But yeah, like you said, I mean, most of these are going for exposed wall applications. If you're putting on a floor, they're going to be covered by another wall or, or something right. else. Right, right. We're going to cap a piece of bull yeah. nose over here or a piece of uh, wall trim later. So Right. Yeah, so there are a ton of profiles. You can go from super, super minimal to a rounded edge that mimics a traditional bull nose, a claw deck that's a big chunky square. Um, you also have some floor options too, and you just recently came out with some LBT options. Uh, right. Especially if you wanted something that's super durable, ready for the floor, they're just a slightly different profile to account for the you know, generally smaller scale, smaller thickness right. of an LVT versus like a porcelain. Yeah, this is our T molding. This fits a like height surfaces. These are our, our Reno versions if you want to ramp down to a, to a lower surface. Awesome. Okay, so say we've figured out what profile we want. We've found a, a color, which is, I mean, basically just about any color you could dream of. Uh, you do have the PVCs that you mentioned some powder coated just kind of paint colors you have some textured finish some different metallics right. different uh, you know brush and matte and polished finishes and those a lot of people will either try to match their tile match their grout you can match your fixtures your faucet whatever that might right. be so a ton of different options to either make it stand out as a, a really cool statement that ties a room together or to blend away right? right yeah I mean we try to keep up with all the market trends these are a nice little sales tool 
that all of your, your stores have right. that they can look at and pick out colors with the customers. And then on the back here, it gives them a nice little chart to show them what those trims are available in those, or what colors are available in what trims. Right, okay. yeah, because not every color is available in every profile. Right. I also want to point out, if you're looking at our catalog online, that's also available towards the back here. All those finishes and colors are in here. Obviously not, not a piece of metal like there, but and then the chart is there too to show you what gotcha. what finishes those come in. Very cool. Okay, so say we figured out the the profile and the color. How do we size this appropriately? Great question, Garrett. And I, I'm gonna just grab a piece of tile here to kind of show what we got going on. So uh, tile Council of North, North America, which is kind of what all of us vendors, uh, this is kind of our Bible, I should say, and they say that anything with one leg that's longer than 15 inches is, is what they consider a large format tile. That's important because you kind of got to know what the installer is going to be doing with this tile. So we have these nice little profile sizers. Obviously, you can use a tape measure too, but anything that's going to be smaller than 15 inches, we're going to match up the profile exactly with the height by putting this piece over. Once we find the one that fits it perfectly, we have it both in metric and standard, which corresponds with our catalog and picking that out. Now, if this is larger than 15 inches, we're going to assume that the installer is going to be using more mortar underneath it. Mm -hmm. So if we've got the exact size, we want to step up to the next size to account for that mortar that he's going to put under there. So that's how we size that profile. So if it's 15, one leg is 15 inches and lower, we're going to go with the exact size. If it's 15 inches and above, we're going to step up to the next size up just to account for the mortar that the installer. It's always going to be easier for them to build up than to try to shave the tile down. To get right, the yeah, because if we're protecting an edge, you want it to actually protect the edge. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. And that's, so that's the same for floor or wall applications? Yes. That sizing? Yep. Very Absolutely. Cool. All right, we have a quick demo here set up. Uh, so you can actually see how these pieces go in. Yeah. So uh, you already got your mud set there. Why don't you just talk about what we're going to do in some of these different profiles that you brought over? So what we're going to do is, as you can see here, we didn't really talk about this a whole lot. This is our anchoring leg. This is what anchors that piece underneath the tile. So this gets locked into the mortar. So we're going to actually set a couple pieces here for those people that haven't ever seen one of these set. So we got some mud mixed up, like Garrett said. We're going to be installing one of our quadduct pieces. Our BWS, which is actually an expansion joint, if you can kind of see it has an open channel. This is one of our PVC pieces that we'll talk about over there too, but this eliminates the need for a caulking joint. The thing with a caulking joint is it breaks down, it can wear out over time, and it's a maintenance issue. These are no maintenance issue. They're a solid piece. So we got a little bit of mortar mixed up here. It's going to sit in the bucket for a little bit. But we're essentially going to fill in our beaker here. So what, what steps do you generally take? Do you ever set your metal pieces before, uh, or is it during? Are there any tips and tricks on that end? Um, during the installation, mostly for the floor, because like I said, we want this anchoring leg to be completely embedded in the thin set. Okay. Uh, when we get to the wall application, you know, these pieces come in eight foot and 10 foot lengths. So we want to make sure, you know, if we're doing maybe a long wall in a bathroom or something like that, um, we don't want to try to be slipping it necessarily in behind the tile, right? Because as we push this down, what can happen? If you can look at it on the backside, it will push our mud off. Gotcha. So we want to, you know, I recommend, and I know you and I kind of talked about it before we started, maybe hot gluing that piece up to the, you know, if you've got an eight foot run, right? Maybe tagging it up with a little bit of hot glue. You could also use maybe some blue masking tape or something like that. Right, because especially on, on the walls, you're going to need something to hold it there. At least on the floor, it's, you know, you got gravity on your side. Right, absolutely. Yeah. So we're just going to back comb just like we were doing a typical installation. We're going to bring that piece in. I'm kind of going to show here with our BWS. I'm going to just get it lined up kind of close where we're at. Jig Garrett, can I get you to just hold Absolutely. that? Because what I want to do is I want to show how we push that down into the mortar mm -hmm. and how that mortar comes up through all them anchoring legs. Gotcha. Okay. Okay, we'll bring that down. Work it back and forth a little bit. And that's of course you piece. can make minor adjustments once it's Absolutely. set in there. Absolutely. 
I'm gonna fill the rest of this in. So you could use this. Well, I guess where would you use this? Is it wh where you actually need expansion built in or is it more of a decorative option? Well, so referring back to the Tile Council of North America, if your installer is doing a large, you know, let's say we're gonna do this room. Any area that's 25 feet and more in one direction, you're gonna need this expansion joint. Hmm. Um, we also have a piece, um, the BWE, that is just a single anchoring leg, or I'm sorry, it's BWA, I misspoke. BWA is a single, ang single anchoring leg, easy for me to say, right? Right. Um, piece that could be like if it was butting up against a balcony or something where you didn't necessarily want to cover that with a piece of base trim or something like that. Okay. Uh, that's also a nice piece, say that you're coming around a tub surround. So they've got a bathtub with a shower when they bring the tile down. Obviously we're gonna have some kind of a caulk joint, again, a maintenance joint. Mm -hmm. We could use that BWA down there at the bottom to eliminate that and make a nice clean okay. edge. And don't feel like you have to memorize all these different yeah. letters and acronyms. <laughs> <laughs> we don't, uh, that's what the book is for, but, but they all do mean something. I mean, you have, uh, all, all these products have a product code uh, and it incorporates a number for the size and it incorporates some letters for the finish in addition to the you know, jolly or sheen or whatever that profile is. Right. And then we're gonna we're gonna put our flagship piece in here. This is our sheen piece. I'm losing my mask again. We're gonna hold that up. We're gonna push that down. Make sure that that mud's mortar's coming up through there. Got mortar on the back of the tile. Work that in. Nice. Yeah. So if you take a look at this, I mean, if you're looking directly at it, you don't see much of this different color view. or different you know, metallic finish at all. Uh, you could use this as an accent, and again, there are some different shapes like this quadic if you wanted that profile to be more noticeable. But then you look at the end, and that's a fully protected tile piece. That's not going anywhere. Yeah. And then we would just make sure that we clean that and keep this joint here free of any mortar as they're setting. Right, because you're going to grout that too. Exactly. Exactly. Right. So we talked about, you know, like I said, when we do the floor, we want to make sure we press that in. What I've done here, we're just going to put this piece on the back and put a little bit more mortar on there because we're just setting some base trim and obviously we're not working with an eight foot piece. So I'm just going to kind of set this in. Again, okay. we're going to show how that Which is a lot comes easier when there. it's a one foot piece, but if it's an eight right. foot piece, you're going to want to tack it to the wall generally. Right. We're going to put that in. And you can see that that makes a nice finished edge. Now, if that was the top of our base or maybe the top of our wall, you know, we could obviously stop there. The nice thing, you could also use that quad deck piece as maybe a decorative accent band in a shower mm -hmm. and go with some tile above it. Right. So. And you do have some ones that, that are in the book that are specifically for kind of like a little channel, but it's a specific size. So you could just use a, one of these, a couple of these, and you can integrate those as much as yeah, you want. Yeah, I really. mean, if you can pretty much imagine it, I mean, we've probably got something to. There is a quad -ec F S piece, like you talked about, that will accept a small piece of glass or something like that. So if you're doing a large format, it's got this profile on both sides with a place to put the glass in the middle so you can continue to stack your tiles. If you wanted to go big because you're kind of limited on size with that, you could do, you know, one piece here, maybe use another piece of quad -ec right up here, and then continue to stack your tile. The other nice thing and a little little trick to the installers inside of it, uh, we do make these nice little inside and outside corners for these. They slip in there. There is a little bit of movement in them. What I always typically like to do is if I'm installing these corners, you know, to go around a corner, I'll take a little bit of super glue, put a little dab on there, set it in place, hold it until it sets up where I want it, and then that piece is attached, and it's not going to move on me during the installation. Yeah, that is cool. So you have these little inside outside corners. Right. Uh, there are some some tricks when you don't have, you know, maybe these these beefy ones that don't have those coordinating pieces. Right. If the, it's the a sheen or sheen or jolly. Yeah, the sheen and jolly are not going to have those. Those are going to be either mitered, mm -hmm. or a lot of guys will try to cut them in the back and just bend them around the corner. The only problem with that with that is when you get to our color coded finishes, a lot of times bending that profile gotcha. can break the finish. So. So yeah, you can get pretty tricky with these. Um, there are a ton of different online resource options. Obviously, 
these days with COVID, we're not doing a whole lot of uh, in-person, right. large, you know, we're not, we're not flying people out to Reno to do the hands-on yeah. demos, but there's a lot of great resources. Eight times a day throughout the week, there is some type of uh, online training, so virtual training. So if you have any questions on that, let us know. Uh, we'd be happy to connect you with that. But again, we're going through all these, so more and more tips and tricks. These are all live training, so you can type in your questions, get answers, immediate feedback. Yeah. So, yeah, okay. So, there's always kind of been known as the education company. And again, in lieu of doing our actual hands on workshops, we do have the live online training. Thank you for mentioning that. Um, if you go to our website, you'll find all kinds of resources. Uh, our tips and tricks video series on our YouTube channel at Schluter.1. Um, yeah. Very cool. All right. So, quickly before we wrap up, let's introduce a couple pieces that uh, the let's general public this. may not be as familiar with. So tell us about this one. So this is our EKE piece. This is a double anchoring. I think I have a piece of it here just to kind of show you. Um, you can see that it has a piece here on the on the side here that the tile slips into. It's got an open channel on the back. We haven't put any mortar in there. That allows for the expansion contraction in a 90 degree. A vertical or horizontal change of plane, that's where we want to have some kind of a caulking joint, or in this case, we're using our PVC, so it's a non-maintenance issue. Um, this is our double anchoring piece that kind of makes a nice neat corner and maybe a shower application. Right. And you know, we, we talked about some tips and tricks with uh, caulking, specifically silicone a little while back, but some people still don't, don't like it. Uh, or you know, so this is just an option to keep in mind if you well, want to go Well, again, it just becomes a maintenance issue. Right. You know, that's going to break down over time, that caulking or that silicone, especially the color matched ones a lot of times. So this, this eliminates the need for that. Gotcha. All right, one more thing that I had not seen before either, this glass channel. Yeah, so this is a piece, um, this is our Deco SG that we have. We have two different options, one for the 3 8 tempered glass and one for the half inch. A typical uh, problem that we see, obviously we have some waterproof shower systems and stuff like that. Once the installers put those together, now we got the glass guy coming in and drilling some holes through our curb or drilling some holes through our membrane. That's what we want to avoid because obviously as you know a penetration means leak right so this is a piece that we offer that the installer can pick out based on the size of the tile or the thickness of the tile obviously it sits nice and flush your glass guy can come in and set his glass right in there without having to drill holes or penetrations through the waterproofing membrane interesting interesting so, so yeah that's another consideration again as you mentioned you do all these things to make a waterproof shower just to drill a couple holes in them. So right. uh, an option to uh, get around that and then just silicone in place. Okay, so I think we touched on, on everything. Again, this is just something we wanna make sure you consider for your projects. There are a ton, literally 4,000 some different combinations of profiles and colors and sizes to choose from. So whatever edge profile you have, whatever design you wanna, you wanna create, there is an option through Schluter. So Ken, thank you for taking the time no. to join us today thank and, and you walk through this. If you have any questions, this guy knows all the tips and tricks. Uh, we have all the books, all the profiles, all the colors and all of our locations. So stop by, have a conversation and let us know if you have any questions. Other than that, we'll see you next time. Thank you.